Hello, Bruce Tim, producer. Kurt Gaeta, director. Alan Burnett, producer writer. Stan Berkowitz, writer. Paul Dini, producer writer. Glenn Murakami, producer. Everybody say hi to Stan. Hi, Stan. Hi, Stan. 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 hi everybody. We've talked in the last one. You can have the whole this whole show. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Take it away, Stan. I well. Where'd I, you come up with the idea for this show, I, Stan? It, I got a drawing from. Uh, I was told it came from James Tucker, and Alan said, "Here, James drew this. It's some kind of sound guy. We want to call him Shriek." And I said, okay, what's the story? And he goes, I don't know, figure it out. <laughs> so, of course, when you have a villain who uses sound, what's going to happen to the villain at the end? He's going to lose the sound. Actually, I seem to remember that years and years and years, actually, before we did Batman Beyond, I used to just pop into Alan Burnett's office yeah. and just chew the fat. And I had mentioned to you that I would like wow. to do a, a villain someday who could negate sound. I would like to do a silent sequence in an episode mm -hmm. that was literally all silent. No music, no yeah. sound effects, no nothing. And uh, so I don't know if you remembered that and oh, yeah. I was always, pitched that I, I've to always Stan. been excited to do that. I really have. In fact, that became the heat for me on this show. Uh -huh. Was that a section where we go to, I don't know, do we even use room noise? or is There's it, nothing. At least for, nothing. For, for a short period of time when we get there, there's, there's nothing. There's no sound. Eventually the, the, the music starts coming back in and then all, all sound. But uh, I know my only regret is we didn't make that sequence longer. It's a neat sequence, but... It's it's like yeah it's really cool. I wish we well it terrified us though we, when we watched it. You know we thought wow is this just going to mm -hmm. bore everybody to tears because there's no sound effects, but um, it sure is really different. Well. I mean in, in a lot of cartoons it's just wall to wall sound. It's, yeah. whether it's a, you know music or characters talking or uh, well we like to have nice meaty soundtracks sure. too. We like to have nice layered textured soundtracks. But it's really interesting when we get to that sequence you'll you'll see it. It's it's nothing. I mean it's you know not even dial tone. I mean it's Wow. It generates ultra low frequency vibrations, which I can name. So, uh, to go back and clarify what Stan said, it turned out that drawing that um, the design of Shriek's costume wasn't actually drawn by James Tucker. It was actually drawn by Mr. Mirakami over here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, what had happened is when we um, we first started doing this show, like we, we mentioned on the last commentary, we were making this stuff up as we went along, and. A lot of the villain designs just came from, like, out of the blue. Basically, Glenn sat down and just, you know, without even having a concept of what these guys were, just started just drawing a bunch of just weird designs. And I don't think the design for Shriek was meant to be a sound guy. It was just, what, like a robotic weird thing. I think so. We had a meeting, and I remember a bunch of us get going in a room, and James drew ink mm -hmm. and the uh, Jokers... Well, yeah, a bunch of the Jokers, um, yeah. Ink was his one big uh, contribution, villain-wise, that actually got made. And Karari. Who, no, you do. Karari, Karari. was Karari. That's, That was yeah. yours, yeah. Yeah, again, it just started with the visual. And yeah. the, the character who eventually became Payback was started the same way. It was just a design that you would come up with. That was the guy with, like, the tattered kind of costume. He looked kind of like a mummy. Do you remember? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that eventually became Payback. We are talking about, yeah, all the things we didn't want to do. We didn't mm -hmm. want to do another Two-Face. Right. We wanted a Clayface-like character. We wanted, weren't we trying to figure we out? We wanted to repeat the Batman villain archetypes, but change them so radically that they wouldn't be obvious what they were. But we wanted them to have some of the same motifs, at mm -hmm. least psychologically or whatever, but um, but not just be like, you know, son of the Joker or son of Two-Face or son of Poison Ivy. Robo-Penguin. Right. Yeah, we mm -hmm. really wanted to resist doing that. So, uh, so yeah, Ink was kind of our Clayface character in that she's a shapeshifter. I'll notify the stockholders. Meeting adjourned. How'd it go? The way I wanted. Must have been pretty important to get you out of that house, especially in daylight. I'll show you. Uh, upside down Batmobile. Upside down Batmobile, one of our trademarks. Shriek is pretty original. He doesn't really yeah. fit any kind of archetype from the from the original Batman series. I liked him as a villain because he was written as a sort of a low class guy, right? Well, he was just a sound designer. He wasn't even a villain. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. So he starts off pretty well, realistically, I think. right? And, and low class is my area of expertise. <laughs> <laughs> This was Blevins, right? Uh, yes, the sequence yeah, was. This, this, this was boarded by Brett Blevins. That's a dead giveaway. That's a Blevins close-up if ever I saw one. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if Brett designed him without the mask. Uh, he might have. Now that you mention it, it does kind of look like I don't think that was me. It does kind of look like a Blevins-y design. Now, that's, of course, our old uh, 
um, police headquarters from Batman the Animated Series. We mm-hmm. basically just just dirtied up the old stock. The same thing there. No, we repainted all. Well, of we it. repainted it, but I'm saying you know we basically just used the same old design and you know just kind of gunked it up a bit. I like that there was a Joker wanted poster, as if like. <laughs> they never caught him. Yeah, like never caught him, and that you would you need to see his face. You can't remember his face. <laughs> yeah. Be on the lookout for this man. This man. Yeah. If you see him walking. Around. You know, it was so nice writing for an older actor or an older character with a lot of texture to him. You know, he's, it, it, it's, this is a unique character in, uh, in kids' entertainment. Well, he's definitely crankier. Mm-hmm. Well, but, he, you know, he doesn't solve everything by, by smashing somebody's head. No, he lets Terry do that. Yeah. You know this guy? Wow, Sorry, that's cool. Yeah, that was the trick, was how to visualize sound. So we figured it would just be kicking up dust waves and stuff. Of course, it would move a lot faster than it actually does. <laughs> but uh, Terry has plenty of time to get out of the way of it every time. It's cool, though. Yeah, it's very cool. This is one of my favorite episodes, I think. I like it. I like it for any number of reasons. Well, I love the silent sequence. Yeah. And uh, I love uh, the, the dialogue exchange between Terry and Bruce at the end, where basically Bruce says that he still thinks of himself as as Batman he actually admits that out loud I think that's a neat bit mm-hmm. it was nice animation yeah it was Mr. Wayne. now now Mr. Wayne you know you have to take your- oh yeah we had this tricky sequence where uh, Shriek is trying to uh, coax Bruce to kill himself and boy that was a tricky one with uh, BS&P we weren't actually allowed <laughs> to have um, Shriek say jump. You remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a, a big deal. And uh, I, I completely agree with them. I you know, I have really no problem with it. But it was just kind of like, well, that's, the, that's the, the scene, though. You have to get that point across that Shriek is trying to talk him into you know, jumping out the window. And uh, so it was, uh, it was tricky. But I think it works. What they, I think they just end up saying, do it. Do it. Unless I can shut Wayne up. Who else boarded on this? Uh, this part would be Bob Smith and. Oh Phil yeah, Nor- you can tell. Phil Norwood also later. If it's an upshot, chances are <laughs> it's Bob Smith. Did Pat work on this? Pat McGowan. You know, I think he um, was think drawing the character for you know without the. Um, was Shriek Pat's design? Um, you know, it could have been after the fact, but he was designing. Yeah, um, I think it was afterwards. Hmm. Yeah, could be. Hmm. I had forgotten that Pat worked on this show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we know it's some kind of sound generator. So now what? Boy, those colors are garish, aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah, I was just noticing Terry's purple <laughs> shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it still works. It's futuristic. It, yeah, considering all the... Uh, belt. Yeah, and, and brown consoles. <laughs> we never really had to direct Will very much. He just fit right into that character. <laughs> well, you know, when we did the auditions for the show, um, you know, we auditioned tons of, of young actors, um, some of whom who we end up using, not as Terry, but as other characters, like Mark Warden, who played the first Joker in the first episode, um, the guy on the, on the subway. Um, but uh, some of them were really good, um, but Will was just hands down the best I mean when we heard Will it was just like oh there's you know we're done no question sound laboratory Gotham City and the old man thought I couldn't do this stuff on my own go away I don't want to hear you it's for your own good now get up go to the window what for go Within the first six months of, of the sound era back in 1929, 1930, you had people like Fritz Lang making the movie M, where it's as if they'd open a treasure chest and now they could play with sound. And mm-hmm. If you look at a movie like M, he's, he's constantly playing with it. Mm-hmm. Instead of just going, well, you know, now I can have my actors talk your ears off, there are all these little tricks that he plays with clicking sounds and people being alerted by uh, strange noises. Mm-hmm. 
it's brilliant. And you watch a movie like that and you go, okay, now I should be inspired to figure out something for the cartoon. Yeah, we have a tendency to score a lot of the action and you'll notice very rarely do we actually have an action scene that doesn't actually have the music score in it because we really rely on the music to drive the picture. But we have done it a couple times where we actually had action sequences that were just, you know, done with ambient sound and it's, it's effective, but it's tricky because... You know, <laughs> we're just so used to having music with a pulsing beat that drives it. We've been really fortunate since um, going back, I think, to uh, Superman and even before that, um, we have a really brilliant sound design guy named uh, um, Rob Hargreaves. I've given him shout outs before, but can never do it too often because I think he's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And uh, still working with him today on Justice League and Teen Titans. And he just does a great job. Your pizza, Chief. I didn't order anything. Huh? Well, this is the address I wrote down. There must be some kind of mistake. Chris Milkey is an actor uh, who plays Shriek. He was the guy uh, um, I had noticed him in a, a number of movies and TV shows. He's in The Hidden. He's the first guy who gets possessed by the alien in The Hidden, <laughs> you know, driving down the, down the highway. And uh, in Twin Peaks, he was, uh, I can't remember the character's name. He was the guy who was like sucking on the domino. Do you remember? He yeah. was like the, the creepy yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Transmitter he took off his Snoopy goggles. Too bad. Cool. Yeah, I, I liked his Snoopy goggles and his uh, his funky hat <laughs> with the big flappy ears. Yeah. We were trying to make uh, Terry more of a detective, more of a guy who goes underground and all that. This mm -hmm. is one of those scenes yeah. in which uh, that shows him shows his talent. But not way. not terribly competent though. It is cool that they he you got, got a yeah. hero villain scene and they're not you know. They're still sort of playing it before they, uh, playing it on the same level before uh, uh, Shriek figures it out. Sound vibration? Yeah, I heard about them the other day. Some of them can knock over a tree. So they say. I remember being impressed with that hand. I know, the animation of it, yeah, the little wave like, he did. Ooh, ooh, hand animation. You want to know about sound vibrations? Would you like to see how they can split your skull? There's no way out. Yeah, that's not uh, not suspicious at all. Hey, that just looks like like my TV. That's what behind my TV looks like. Massive wires. Okay. Wrecking his own studio. What a genius. Yeah. <laughs> I think we talked about doing the shockwave thing, but we couldn't figure you out know, how to make it animate, so again, we just did the dust. If we were doing it nowadays, there's all yeah, kinds of digital filters. You know, we would just, you know, there's like probably 15 different programs that would give you that effect. But back then, yeah, this is old school, you know? So, we got by with camera shakes and dust, which is actually neat. Now, Sherman Howard, who what plays uh, right? Derek Powers, Stan actually has history with him. Also played Lex Luthor in the uh, Superboy series. That's right. From the uh, early 90s. And he was almost our Luthor. Really? Well, when we uh, were casting Superman, uh, Sherman Howard came in. He was one of the guys we auditioned as Lex Luthor, and he was our front runner. And then uh, Clancy Brown came in, and we went, ah, you know what? We like Clancy just a little bit better. So, but we remembered Sherman very, you know, very vividly. And we actually ended up using him a couple times on Superman as well for a couple different parts. I think he played Steppenwolf and uh, he was the preserver as well on Superman. Yeah. Um, but when we came to do this show, we kind of thought it would be kind of a neat way to change the Batman paradigm to give him his own kind of Lex Luthor type arch villain to fight against. And uh, the minute we said Lex Luthor, we thought, hey, Sherman Howard. So, um, and he's quite different than Lex, and it, a lot of it comes right out of Sherman's way of playing him, because he's written very similar to Lex, but uh, he has a, a very different quality to him, which I like. I can never go back to my lab again. Anyway, I think we should say that uh, Stan was a uh, story editor on Superboy, which is why we're mentioning that. Exactly. Sherman liked to improvise on that show. Less so here. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't go in for a lot of that uh, improvising in our show. Show my face anymore, or use my name. 
The face is no loss, and if you miss your there are the consequences of wrecking his own lab, and he's dealing with them right now. <laughs> I was gonna say. So he's the guy that Powers is gonna hire to go kill Bruce Wayne for him. Guy who wrecks his own lab. <laughs> Probably squeal on Powers the minute he had a chance to. Now go forth and do damage. That's one of my favorite lines. Mm -hmm. Go forth and do damage. Good line. What if Batman gets into it again? Kill him. I like that too. Yeah. Uh, again, just the, the delivery of it is just like, oh, what else are you gonna do? Kill him. Well, Sherman's had so so much practice saying that line. <laughs> don't eat. You know, that's actually really good animation of him shaking his head too. That's the kind of thing we uh, try to. We actually don't have characters shake their head very often because uh, chances are it doesn't animate very well. And they did a real nice job on that. I'm going to point out that was an egg salad sandwich. <laughs> it was an egg salad sandwich? I think you told me to do that, too. Why? I don't know. It's hospital, <laughs> it's hospital food. They think I'm crazy. Was there a we'll moment when Bruce that. really thought anywhere. he was hearing voices? I don't know. <laughs> well, he almost jumped out the window. Orderlies could come yeah. in at any second. Check the light fixture. There might be a speaker hidden in it. Can't strip the. Wait a minute. What are you doing? Ow! Big bandage for such a small wound. Yeah, it's a, a two giant chip for the future. <laughs> He's the one who knocked down the police station. Well, we have to make it so you can see. It. I know yeah. it. It's like those giant cell phones they have. You have to be able to see it. It never occurred to me. I love that lighting. That was awesome. That was um, a pain too. Really? Yeah. But did you actually do that that model with the half with the split lighting on the dog? Well, because every time we go into a new color right. scheme, we got to do a new. Uh, yeah. Normally we just yeah. do it on a cut, right? You show him getting into the car. Yeah. He's in yeah. one color yeah. scheme, then you cut inside, and then he's in another color scheme. So there, it was half and half. That was quite nice. Kind of got too tricky for our own own good. So we're coming up to that uh, silent sequence. Which we'll all have to talk through. No, please. No, we can just sit here in silence and watch. Well, the, the, the point of it is that we, in fight scenes, you count on the noise to uh, alert you, and he doesn't have any of that to deal with here. It was pretty cool to build the sequence, because we had to come up with a lot of things that would normally make a lot of noise. So I don't know whose idea it was to put it in this factory with all the mechanized stuff, but it was really smart, because... Uh, you actually see a lot of activity, and also theoretically, it's hiding his, uh, you know, Terry's movements. That's why he turns all the stuff on, is to visually and orally confuse Shriek. Mm -hmm. So when he makes the sound go away. So this was Phil's sequence, right? Right. So that's really cool. It's eerie too. I didn't know if any of this was going to work or not, if it was going to play, if it was going to make sense. The idea being that Shriek has turned up his specific <laughs> sound just to hear Terry. You know, you're always afraid that somebody's going to turn on the show right at this point and then just turn their volume all the way <laughs> I wish. Yeah. I was yeah, hoping was people thinking. would do that. Because, you know, when the sound does come back on, that's actually a story point, that, that he has turned up his own volume so loud that it, it actually deafens him. So yeah, here, we, we couldn't bear it. We had to put in a little bit of music here. But it's actually, dramatically, it works. But anyhow, so yeah, we I was hoping that people would do that. They would actually turn up their volume. Because the thing is, when the sound does come back on, there's no way to actually physically make it louder. Mm -hmm. Like those commercials that supposedly aren't any louder than the rest of the shows, there, supposedly. But um, but I wish there was a way to like artificially amp up the volume, you know. But uh, we did. We tried to make it as loud as possible when the sound did come back on. And it's dangerous not having sound. I mean, it's loud, but it should be like that first guitar <laughs> chord from School's Out, you know? Yeah. This is a great one. This is a good one. That's cruel. Get up. Does he have blood in his ears? <laughs> he should. <laughs> That's oh. cool. Oh. Harsh. Very no. cool. No. It 
has been moved and seconded that Wayne Powers tender an offer to the city in order to expand. Coming up on the end here, guys. Anybody have you got any last brilliant ideas or thoughts, comments? Mm -hmm. Look at all those cardboard people in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> The motion is it reminds me that, uh, you know, we were talking about that we want, you wanted to do a silent sequence. Remember, we always wanted to do a silent Batman, a Batman that with, with no dialogue. Mm -hmm. and, and we got we had a title, Silent Night with a K, mm -hmm. but um, hmm. never got around, never got around to doing it. Well, you did it on that um, Mystery of the Batwoman yeah. featurette. Yeah, that was seven minutes, so yeah. it worked fine there, but... Mm -hmm. It would have been tough to do an entire episode with no dialogue. But mm -hmm. It would have been interesting, you know? Yeah. No, I, I would love to do something like that someday. And it would save you a lot of dough, too. So don't have to that's, pay the actors. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that was the condition on the Catwoman uh, short. We we couldn't pay the actors, so. So he said, we'll do, we'll do the Silent Night thing. Yeah. That's funny. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you next time. Fun seeing it again. So long. <laughs>